Hey, hey, this is Sherelle Martin here again, teaching you how to do bookkeeping without boundaries. I've tried to do this video like four or five times. My little microphone stopped working. Then I tried to record it, record the whole thing, no audio. So maybe this one will be the one you get to see. So anyway, I wanted to come on here and talk to you guys about how to cut costs. So it is October, it is the fall, and it's officially budget season for anyone who hasn't already started. Some people have started in September, which is not, not a bad thing. The earlier you start, the better. But for those of us who are late to the game, um, October is when they temp we typically do the budget. And typically when a business is, starts looking at doing their budget for the upcoming year, one of the main things they're looking for is to cut costs because they want to increase cash flow. They want to increase profitability. And to be honest, when we're talking about business, there's only two ways to increase profitability and cash flow. You either cut your costs or you raise your prices and bring in more income. Like there's no other way. So we're going to talk today about cutting costs. And so what I typically take businesses through is a process called a cost audit. And what is a cost audit? So this is a four-step process that I created some years ago um, out of necessity of doing it for myself where I needed to cut some costs. I was a small business. I was making less than six figures. So every penny counted at, counted at that point in my business and I needed to reduce some costs. And so I came up with this process to do a cost audit. And so what that does is it takes businesses through a four-step process to help them figure out if they need a cost and if they don't have to remove that cost from their budget. And so the first step in there, after they've taken the time to pull down their P&L with all of their expenses, um, it's probably best to even look at a GL so that you can see who they're paying and um, and how often they're paying and the frequency of their paying. And so throughout this, um, me telling you these four steps, we're going to probably use subscriptions uh, as a as a example because it's you know everyone can relate to that because everything is a subscription now. And so, um, so basically we take them through the process of looking at all the costs. And when I say all the costs, I mean all the costs, everything from all the Amazons, the insurance, the software subscriptions, the gas, the parking, the travel, all of it, <clears throat> looking at all of the expenses and figuring out where can we cut costs? Where can we remove the money leaking out of the business? And so the very first thing that we look at is, do they really need it? Um, that's the first step to assess if the expense is needed, specifically when we're talking about software subscriptions and dues and subscriptions. And, um, you know, I don't know that many people do a lot of magazine prescriptions, but we're subscribing to and joining all these communities and organizations because we want to be supportive. But do we really need it? Is it supporting us? Are we engaging? Are we being involved? Do we use those subscriptions for those softwares, those platforms fully, completely? Do we even need it? Did we sign up for it just because somebody said to sign up for it? Or did we sign up for it and forget about it? Or did we sign up for one for, for one particular thing? Turns out it, it doesn't do it that well and we stop using it and now we're just paying for it. It's the proverbial gym membership, right? Where you sign up for something and then you don't pay for it and three years later you're trying to figure out where your all money all your money went to the gym. So the very first step is to assess, do they need it? The second step is to assess, are they getting an ROI on it? So are we getting a return on our investment? Am I getting the value and the benefit of that software from using that software and paying the money for that particular software? Am I getting the value investment from that community, from being in that community? Am I even engaging in that community, right? Are we getting an ROI? So if they don't need it, cut it. If they aren't getting an ROI on it, cut it. Um, if they determine they are getting an ROI, then it becomes, are we getting the IRI that was expected? Is it a good ROI or is it just kind of like a teeny bit of money? And at that point, you begin to assess that if it is something that is needed, sorry about that, if it is something that is needed, is that particular tool, app, software, program, community, the thing that can give us what we need? Or is there another one that's better? Is there another one that's more fit for us when we're talking about communities? When we're talking about softwares, is there another one that costs less? Is there another one that does that plus some of the other things that other softwares do? Does that one software collectively do the thing that three different softwares do and cost us less money? These are the things that we're looking at when we're trying to assess if we are getting an ROI on it. Um, and if we are, 
is it a good one and or is can we find something that kind of better fits our budget because it costs less or fits our our the goal of the business or the processes or the things or the workflow because it does multiple things and it and, and we can kind of cut some other costs if not cut it find a way to cut it um and so the fourth step is to actually cut the expenses so it could be in some instances that yes you know we do need it. Yes, we are kind of getting an ROI on it, um, but we aren't really getting a good a good ROI on it. And so then that becomes a question of do you goes back to number one, right? Like, do you really need it? Because if not, you can cut it altogether. Um, those are the four steps. I have been doing this in my business, like I said, since the early, early stages. The very first time I did it, I cut seven thousand dollars out of my um expenses so i increased my revenue my profit by seven thousand dollars which for a small business who was not yet hitting the six figure mark seven thousand dollars was a lot of money i mean hey i'm over that and i still think seven thousand dollars is a lot of money so um but the goal is to figure out where and how we can cut the cost to increase our profitability because business owners might be thinking that oh it's only 9.99 or or 29.99 or 19.99 or whatever the case may be but when you multiply that by 12, all of that adds up. And so you can get to $7,000 or more really quickly, which can, so as a, you know, you can save businesses a lot of money by simply doing a cost audit. This is the fall time that we're doing it. We typically do it twice a year. So I usually do it in the early summer, like May, June timeframe. Like once the year is kicked off and we're kind of in the groove of things, I assess where we are. And, and if we're, you know, towards our goal for the year, I might do a smaller version there. But when I'm doing my audit, my budget for the upcoming year, it's when I do a massive overhaul and I cut, sorry about that. I cut everything. And so <laughs> if you ha need help with helping a business owner do a cost audit, then let me know and we can have a conversation about it. If you are a business owner who needs to do a cost audit and you don't know where to begin and you need some help, then feel free to reach out and we can help definitely help you do that. That's all I have for you today. I'll see you next time on Bookkeeping Without Boundaries.